The trouble with steam pumps, part 6. A Southworth engine's large duplex steam pump and this one is about tweaking the valve timing. In this clip the pump is running using compressed air and it's running quite well, the beats are fairly even, just with a hint of a skip. From a musician's point of view, a rhythmical sound which are even quavers. At the moment the quavers are not quite even enough. The rhythm has a dotted feel and it needs to be just straight quavers. I'm just pleased that it's running and I'm even more pleased that it does actually now pump water into the boiler against boiler pressure. But all the pump is doing here is taking the water out of the container and pumping it back in. I need to restrict the flow somewhat and then I will be able to set the pump very accurately and get a better exhaust beat. If you look at the valve rods where they go through the operating arms you can see there's quite a lot of play. I haven't tightened them up. This connection doesn't need to be tight. There does need to be a slight end float between the brass washers and the main operating arms. After this video I'm actually going to tweak it off camera. Making these videos is not simple and a lot of the time I have to do the job whilst watching the viewfinder. Sometimes I get it wrong with the image not in the centre of the screen or not on the screen at all and that's usually when things are going very well. I think the timing is quite close at the moment and far better than it was when I put the valves in the wrong way around. Tweaking valve timing for me really is an obsession. The video I showed in the last episode which featured my friend Roger's pump was its first steam run and as you can see clearly on the video there are plenty of leaks and the evenness of the beats is the exception rather than the rule. On this pump I think I may have to move the position slightly of the blocks that are clamped to the piston rods but I can't show this on video as my hands will be in the way all the time. That's why I'm going to perform the final tweaks off camera. This tweaking session was quite successful. The beats are sounding slightly more even. It will be better though when I put some back pressure in the system so the pump is having to push a bit harder. It's rattling because the pistons are hitting each end of the cylinder. And at a slow speed because it's not really pumping, it's not as even as I'd like it to be. I fitted new o-rings to the valve glands and here I'm just making sure that I fully tightened the nuts to hold the parts in place. I'm going to fire up the boiler and give the engine a steam test but first of all I'm changing these aluminium washers on the check valves. This boiler is not very old but there is some corrosion already. The washer on the bench is a shim washer so that the check valve ends up in the right place. Here I'm applying some Loctite 542 and now as you can see I've refitted it to the back head. In this part of the clip I'm removing the burner. Here I'm removing the jet. I've shown this before but this boiler is absolutely beautifully made. These are the water tubes down the centre flue. Why am I removing the burner? Because when it's lit it's generating far too much carbon monoxide. I'm going to drill another hole in this component to admit more primary air. This is the first modification. I do have a couple more in mind if this doesn't work. That's it for the modification though in this video. I will feature the modifications in separate videos. Time now to light the gas burner and the good news is no howling whatsoever. And the burner with its number 15 jet is giving out quite a lot of heat. The boiler's warming up already. I think it's time to check the status of the displacement lubricator. It's easier to do this when it's cold. First of all I undo the valve at the bottom like this. Then I open the steam valve. Currently there's hardly any pressure in the boiler but there's enough to just pump out a blob of water. Immediately followed by a drop of oil. Here I've closed the steam valve, it's a good habit to get into. It's always a good idea to close the steam valve before you attempt to remove the cap from the displacement lubricator. I'm filling the lubricator with steam oil. This is not ordinary lubricating oil, steam oil is much thicker. And to give it its full title it's called steam cylinder oil. Once I refitted the cap I wiped away the surplus oil with a cloth. The displacement lubricator is now good to go, all I need is some steam pressure. I've disconnected the water feed to the check valve and here I'm fitting a piece of silicone rubber tubing to return the water back to its source. You can see the pressure rising, that's not in real time. With £25 per square inch of steam available, I opened the steam valve to the pump. It can't run properly straight away because the steam that first gets to the cylinder immediately condenses the water. But very soon this clears and the pump does start to work properly. Here we go. 
You can hear in this clip how wet the steam exhaust is. But in no time at all the pump reaches working temperature and apart from some leaks around the steam chest which I'm fixing by tightening the nuts at the top of the steam chest everything's fine. These are very small studs and I'm being very careful not to shear them off. There are no major leaks now, nothing to worry about at all. The pressure is rising, the burner is still emitting carbon monoxide so I've removed the batteries from the detector like you do and I've opened all the doors. And I will mention a health and safety notice, do not remove the batteries from your carbon monoxide detector, remove the source of the carbon monoxide. I'll be working on that in a couple of future episodes. Here you can see the double action of the pump. The water stream is continuous. After a while I quickly opened the small valve at the bottom of the displacement lubricator and not much water came out. The lubricator is working fine, I can tell that by the exhaust residue on the bench. After closing the steam valve I refilled the lubricator and in the background you can hear the Stuart safety valve. But at least you can't hear the carbon monoxide alarm. I refitted the batteries and it's not detecting any carbon monoxide now. That's probably because the workshop doors are all open. I'll stop talking and let you listen to the exhaust beats. That concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.